Going downtown, setting a heat pump downtown, paying budget job, yeah. Guys, we are looking at an old pancake style air handler built into a little alcove, little bench seat. The air handler is actually resting on top of boards here, here, underneath either side. We're going to try to bring it out because we're going to put a ton and a half carrier air handler in here. There's enough height, just got to readapt everything. It pulls a free return from over there and we have our supply dog there, which we can't eat into very much because there's a run coming off. Very short. That's what we're working on today. A little tight quarters. So we're going to start hitting stuff with hammers and cutting it with saws. As you guys can see, we're looking at the back of the old air handler. You can see the old aluminum evaporator coil. Sorry for my fingers in the way. Real popular back in the 1980s. There was a number of manufacturers who used aluminum coils. Carrier, Bryant, Train. Big old fat aluminum coils. Not very efficient, but they don't leak. This one doesn't leak to this day. The condenser on the roof definitely leaks, but they held up pretty good. You can see our opening here. We had a service opening on the bottom. The old pancake air handler had bottom access for the blower compartment and some of the controls. We have enough room to fit our ton and a half carrier air handler. It's gonna chop off half of that opening. We're gonna open up another grill right there to get some more air. There should be enough opening to get the proper amount of return airflow for sure. It's our supply, run them short and sweet. A couple runs come off the bottom. One there, one here. Our two drains, it'll be tight. We're cutting some boards to come across here to support the unit when we set a new drain pan on top. It's going to be a tight one. Our supply duct, if you take into account the duct liner, is around 17 by 6. 17 by 6 gives you 102 uh, inches of area inside the duct. It's a little bit short of where we should be, but it's really close and we have a couple registers diving off right at the beginning. So I think it's not going to be an issue here. Especially since we have pretty much a free return, it's going to have pretty much zero static on that end. Because there's not a lot of resistance down there once we put in the next grill. Because even though it's tight down here, there's still a huge area at the end that's going to be pulling free return. So we should be good to go. But just getting it physically into place is the hardest part, which is what we're working on now. Here's our air handler. I've converted it to right hand discharge. All of these air handlers come in left hand discharge. You have to flip the coil over if you want to make it right hand, which we do. The duct works a little bit larger or smaller than this opening, so we'll end up making a flare up on that once we get it up there. And we had a heat kit as well, the 4KW heat kit, which we probably won't be able to use because the electrical won't be able to support it. That was the smallest one they had available. Some of you guys had said that the, these are Carrier Enterprise heat kits. Maybe one of you guys know if Bryant themselves make a heat kit that's a 3KW. That would be some good information for me. And um, we're moving right along, so we're going to take the sucker up there, put it into place, and see how it works. We have our air handler up what seemed like about 1,100 million stairs. Right now, we have our drain pan in place. We're going to cut this back. We're also going to have to blank off the bottom of the air handler because there'll be about an inch gap right there between the flange on the air handler. And this particular duct. We're not going to flange it down because we just don't have enough room. We're going to take it back here, break up an angle on the air handler so it can slide right in and have a little bit of a transition there. There's not a whole lot of room because we're, all, we're already eating into that first run so it's not ideal and we all only have a small gap on the back to get return air so we're going to head through here because we need a certain amount of duct space to get the return air back. And uh, even on a ton and a half, we don't have enough here. So we're going to open that up, 
open up a grill there and hopefully this thing fits in here like well, no, sardines in a can what it looks like I drew one inch lines inside of where I was going to cut because those are going to be flanges that are bent up this one's going to be bent at like a 45 degree another one's going to bend straight up so I have somewhere to screw off the metal whenever I put my little triangular pieces in and fill in where the air handler hits the bottom started to work on the transition here guys there's going to be a duck work we're going to slope it up into the air handler as you see we're going to slope up just to give it a little bit of a transition we don't have enough room to do what you would like to do you have like a 10 or 12 inch transition or longer but we're just going to put a little bit of a transition on it but the air handler sitting in place not perfect that's for sure we still have to fill in some gaps but it fits just barely see right there so and it'll be serviced to the front opening there they're gonna build a door and it's supposed to put a hinge door on the top just in case you want to service anything else so we'll see what happens we'll come back and it'll be completely enclosed there'll be no way to reach any of it I'm sure here I am up on the roof the land of despair there's a bunch of panes up here there's about to be a new one there's an old Duquesne and a York package unit. So, actually, actually, of course, there's a compressor from something. There's a unit that's going out here tomorrow by a crane, the old round one. She has little spine fins in there. Try to blow out the lines here and head back downstairs, raising the air handling. You can see the cityscape pretty good from up here, Cape Fear River. Our riverboat, Henrietta, little shopping centers, Cape Fear Memorial Bridge down there. Pretty nice. And then, of course, you see all the shitty air conditioning. Takes away from it. The USS North Carolina over there, Thomas Rhodes Bridge. It's pretty. It's kind of nice to have this sort of thing whenever you're working. Nice view anyway. Just for a few minutes. Well, it's not beautiful, but it's in there. And it will be functional despite its ugliness because it's slightly cocked because it doesn't quite fit in there straight because of where the stuff comes up from in between floors. So it's a little frustrating there. But it will be functional nonetheless. There goes the old carrier, 1987. Off to the great scrapyard in the sky. Off to be destroyed. And here's our brand new paint. We have the old paint set in place here. Kind of a race against time with the rain. As you see, it's not a lot of room. We have a Duquesne we set in 2008 over there. And some of the existing paint teardrop units from before. And a round one that's still alive over here. Pretty standard fare with the paint. You have a defrost board, contactor, dual run capacitor. Pretty simple. Scroll compressor, Copeland scroll inside of it. I'm gonna wire up the low voltage. We'll get her started here in a little while if it doesn't uh, storm. Looks a little bit more angry today out there. But. Well, guys, I'm pulling a vacuum now. Got my liquid tape. I'm spraying a little bit on the line set. Need to kind of scrape that off. Helps protect things. I'm going to spray the dryer too. You see I already sprayed the line set there. Kind of protect it. Do a little bit of added protection because the dryer really didn't fit up in the uh, air handler compartment. So we'll spray it down once we're done closing the vacuum. Guys, I'm cleaning up the area around the air handler with my DeWalt vacuum. Since it pulls free return, once it's all sealed back up again on top, there will be grills in the front with filters in them. Everything will be blocked up. But we're going to put a filter in the unit for the time being so we can test it. So we don't want any... Uh, any dust and sawdust and stuff getting into the unit, we can help it. So I try to clean up a good bit of it. But And plus, I used my little DeWalt because last time I used my other one, it set off the fire alarm, which is hooked to a building fire alarm, which brought the fire department out, which was embarrassing. So we don't want that to happen again, ever. So, 
we're really close to starting it up. I'm just cleaning up the area. We went to go get some grills. My brother did to go get some grills for the face of this. So they'll have them. And a filter for the inside of the air handler. So we don't have to worry about it getting all dirty while we're testing it. Then we're going to start it up. I have the old iConnect set up there. I got my iPad mini out. Ready to start up the unit. I was concerned that I wouldn't get the readings from my airflow. As you see here. La la la, la la la. We got our return and supply temperatures down there. I was concerned we wouldn't be able to get them because this brick wall is like a lot of the ones downtown. It's like 12 inches thick. And we have to go back to that, see that second light over there? So it's a, it's a good haul, metal roof, big thick brick wall you can tell from right here. But we actually got a signal, I'm kind of surprised, but I'm happy. I haven't had any issues with the signal so far, uh, not like I had complained about last year. So no issues there. Got the old York here. We set that York years ago, and it looks like they thought it was leaking right there. But I think it turns out it was leaking somewhere else. They had a piece of rotten wood back in here that you could push your finger on. It would actually go back through there. So instead they just foamed every possible thing they could, except for that large grate. That's okay. So we have a new paint with all the old paints right there. And Payne's great grandmother carrier and the crazy uncle Duquesne. Our paint unit just started up, guys. We have a nine degree split. We've been running for a couple minutes. It'll start to increase a little bit more. Damn, that paint unit over there is definitely louder than this paint unit. Holy crap. Anyway, we'll let them run for a few more minutes, guys. You see the splits going up. Guys, we have about a 37 degree superheat. Our target's 15.5. We have the old field piece wireless scale up here about to put some refrigerant in the system start with about eight ounces to see where we stand and then move on from there so we can get our superheat down to the target superheat after about eight ounces guys we're about 105 or 248 our superheat still a little high so we're going to add a little bit more our head pressure is a little bit low but the mark on head pressure as far as the target can vary widely because it covers a wide range of units so it's a little bit less critical so I'm going to go ahead and get the superheat down, get our charge a little bit closer, then hopefully we'll be about done with it. we got this some job. real world situations here today, guys. It is raining now. I have my iConnect protection device, aka old dirty shirt. We are real close to getting the proper uh, superheat, or really close. In fact, we're pretty much done here almost. Um, I was having one of my probes drop out, but I think the battery needs recharging. You can see it on the trending here at the bottom. But the superheat goes up to 45. My low pressure pro probe would lose signal. But uh, what I found is uh, that when the batteries get low, they can be a little bit of temp temperament with the uh, probe, they can be a little temperamental, should I say. So replacing the battery should solve that problem. If it doesn't, I'll keep you guys apprised, but uh, I'm pretty confident about that. When I hit the power and turn it back on, it comes right back. So I'm gonna finish this up, but there it goes, see, right there. It's, it's gone. I'll tap it real quick right here. She comes back so i'll replace the batteries and i think it's a non-issue but we'll see but we're about done oh yeah thank goodness